Ooh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa! First of all, Happy Thanksgiving if you are a fellow U.S. citizen, resident, whatever. Today is American Thanksgiving, and it's probably, probably my favorite holiday of the year because it's basically all the things I like about Christmas, except for the presents, but mine is all of the stress and whatnot. So I really enjoy this holiday. For me, it's about food and family and friends and just reflecting on the things that we have in this life that are that are good. So happy Thanksgiving. However, at least in the US, Thanksgiving is a very clear demarcation. So between, let's say, Halloween and Thanksgiving is pre-Christmas season. But once Thanksgiving is over, we enter the dumpster fire that is Black Friday, aka we enter the beginning of the Christmas slash holiday season. And for good or for ill, that means that we have now entered a season of rampant consumerism and lots of sales and lots of encouragements to buy stuff and a huge focus on just like crap, basically. So all of our material wants and needs and, you know, indulgences are egged on in this time of year and book buying is no different. I say this, I mean, I think that books are one of the best things you could possibly give somebody for Christmas because I feel like you're not just giving them like you're essentially giving them an experience, right? And there's a lot of research about like how that's some of the best uh, things that you can give someone. But anyway, you're giving them an experience, you're giving them an opportunity to expand their mind, to uh, have some, you know, wholesome entertainment. And I mean that in the sense of like, good for them, because I think reading almost anything is probably pretty good for you. And I just generally think it's a great, a great gift and I am certainly one who gives a lot of books at Christmas time. That being said, it can be sometimes a little overwhelming trying to figure out what books you should give someone and I think a lot of the kind of guides around this are super focused on pushing the newest and latest and greatest books. And while there's certainly nothing wrong with new books, right? Like I mean I, yeah, I love new books. Um, books that have just come out, that's, that's great. However, I think that there can be a lot of kind of neglect on some great backlist titles and also just some great like books that were out last year that are still good. Um, so I thought instead of trying to push or like be another voice in, hey, here are the top 10 bestsellers that you should be giving as gifts this year, I thought that I would do an admittedly limited approach because I am breaking this out into very gendered stereotypical categories, but uh, kind of a, a different approach to thinking about what kinds of books different kinds of people tend to like. And you may be asking yourself, hey, you, what makes you think that you know what kind of books different kinds of people like? Well, there's two things. One, like I said, I am a prolific gift giver of books and I have given lots of different kinds of people lots of different kinds of books, so I've thought quite a bit about this. But second, I used to be a bookseller and I do have a pretty good idea of like what people liked to give as gifts and things that I used to recommend to people to give as gifts. So. I feel like I have a pretty, you know, pretty solid basis on which to give you some recommendations and I'm gonna get like nitty gritty and and try to give you specific titles within groupings that I notice that people like to give as gifts. And to sort of like concretize this theoretical person that I am recommending books to, I'm gonna divide this up into three sections basically. Book buying tips for dad, book buying tips for mom, book buying tips that tend to work for both. And the reason I decided to divide it up along those kind of gender lines is that I I did notice and I'm not I'm not judging if this is good or bad. I'm just saying that I noticed that there did tend to be a pretty distinct difference in the types of books that men and women bought and in the types of books that people were buying as gifts for men and women. Um, there's a lot of overlap, but just in terms of trying to think through, okay, like when I'm buying gifts for my mom or for my dad, what kind of books do they tend to like? And uh, just kind of taking an amalgamation of that. And I just think that this is a kind of good overall like summary of the different genres that I've noticed those groups tend to like. And then within those genres, some specific recommendations for you. And yeah, so I get that this is a limited approach, but I'm hoping that by, you know, if you have your dad or like a brother or a male friend or a husband or whatever, this might give you some ideas if you're not totally sure what to buy for him. And then likewise, if you have like sisters or friends or aunts or whatever, this might give you some ideas of buying gifts for 
her. Um, and then I, the ones that I think work for both, those can be just sort of like good neutral suggestions for people that you're just not totally sure what they might be into. Just based on like popularity, these are, these are some ideas. So I think that this is probably gonna be a pretty long video. Buckle up, grab some tea, grab some coffee, grab some popcorn, whatever, and uh, let's let's get into some specific recommendations. Okay, we're gonna start with dad. So first of all, I should say, at least in the U.S., I'm not sure about elsewhere, but in general, there are more women readers than men readers past like school age, and women buy way more books than men tend to. So buying books for men, I think, tends to be a bigger challenge for people. The one area that men do read, I think, more than women in general, all of these are generalities, is in the area of nonfiction. But I think it's in very specific places. And as a sidebar, I think that part of this is some of how men and women are socialized. So like fiction can be seen as sort of like escapist or ephemeral or silly or um, not important enough. And like you should be reading nonfiction to better yourself. Do you know what I mean? I think some of that comes into play here. Regardless, if it gives you any context, I own more of the things I'm going to suggest for men than I own things I'm going to suggest for women. So do with that what you will. But anyway, just in general, I do think that nonfiction is a great route for dad. And there's a couple of different categories that I think work for a lot of different dads. And uh, let's get into that. So the first kind of nonfiction that I think tends to work pretty well for dads is current events nonfiction. Now, this could be political. So if you know your dad or the male person you're buying for's uh, politics, this might be a way to cater to that. Uh, I'm gonna pretty much steer clear of that, <laughs> but I will say that, um, you know, my dad tends to be more left-leaning than right, so that might influence some of the things that I'm gonna recommend in particular. But a couple of, like, specific title suggestions. One is ta Coates, Between the World and Me. This is a fantastic, it's a, it's a memoir, but it's also just a reflection on the current, like, Black Lives Matter and, like, the fact that, you know, being a black man in the US is like, not great. Uh, so this book, and then he also just had a new one come out that I've not read yet, but I'm super excited to get to called We Were Eight Years in Power. I think either of these, if if your recipient has any interest in the Black Lives Matter movement, this is a great gift, great book. Another kind of meta current eventsy type book is Evicted by Matthew Desmond. And this book is talking about essentially like the, um, the housing crisis among the poorest in the US. And it's a sociological study, but I think it's speaking to broader current social trends in terms of how unaffordable housing is in most Western countries, like increasingly so. So I think this is another great kind of like current eventsy type book. And then when we're talking about my dad in particular, the biggest hit that I've ever had with him, and I'm talking like, he loves this author, he's super jazzed that I introduced him to this person, and I think that this author will work for a lot of dads for a lot of different reasons, is Michael Lewis. Michael Lewis is an investigative journalist slash like kind of recent historian, I guess, especially of um, matters having to do with Wall Street. And his books make great audio gifts too, if you're looking for an audio gift. The two that I would most recommend are there's a the duo that really go together, I think. And if you're interested in like the Great Recession, these are must reads. The first is Liar's Poker, which is about the bust in the 80s. And the second is The Big Short, which was made into a major motion picture and is about the Great Recession. And they really go together well. Both of them work really well in audio. That's that's how I first encountered them. And the other big book that might work from Michael Lewis is The Blind Side, which was also made into an Oscar winning film, which is about uh, the story of one young man and his journey into playing football despite a lot of um, overwhelming odds. So basically, I think Michael Lewis is pretty much gonna be a winner for a lot of dads. And again, if audio is a thing, he works really great on audio. The next subgenre of nonfiction that I think works really well for dads is historical nonfiction. 
So there's a lot of places you can go with this. And some of this is going to be idiosyncratic to the person that you're buying for. In terms of like overall trends of types of history that I've seen be pretty successful, one political history, uh, that is always a hit. So for that, I would, oh guys, this is one of my top 10 books ever. All the President's Men by Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward. I think that this happens to be a particularly relevant title for these times. But this is a fantastic book, which was made into one of my all time favorite movies. It's just great. And if you're looking at sort of like political history, this is a great, a great idea. Another one that I got for my dad, which I think he enjoyed pretty well, like he found it very interesting was Iron Curtain by Anne Applebaum. Yeah, uh, I've actually not finished reading this. I started reading it, uh, but it's it's very good. And um, again, pretty relevant for current events. So uh, yeah, this is another kind of political slash like geopolitical history that might be might be a good idea. A huge area and like a winner for a lot of dads that I've encountered over the years, like when I was a bookseller, is Civil War history. So some of that might be because I'm from the South and I was a bookseller in the South. But Civil War history is very, very popular. And I've never read this book, but the book that I probably sold the most to people is uh, A Team of Rivals by, I believe, Doris Goodwin. Beacon Hill Books did a read of that I'll try to, if I remember to link it, I'll put that below. Um, and she really, really loved it. And she reads a lot of history. So if that tells you anything, but that is by far and away like the best Civil War bestseller that I ever, I ever sold when I was a bookseller. And just a couple of other random titles. Um, I wanted to give another recommendation for an audio pick. So I went with White Trash by Nancy Eisenberg. Again, this is going to be pretty specific in terms of like how open your recipient is to being confronted with uh, privilege and or like dwelling on injustice. <laughs> but this is a fantastic book, uh, very well written and, and clear. And I thought it worked pretty well as an audio. And then finally, uh, Guns, Germs and Steel by Jared Diamond. Jared Diamond in general is a pretty good, uh, like popular historical writer. Um, so he's got a number of different books that may may work depending on your person's interests. But this in particular is a fascinating book. And it kind of talks about like, why it was that certain parts of the world ended up having more civilized, put that in quotes, civilized uh, influence come into them. And basically he's making an argument about how important resources are to the development of different cultures. So um, this is a, a classic, a fantastic book if your person is interested in history, um, going back not just to like recent history, but like all the way back to like pre-humans basically. Uh, this, is, this is a great choice. And then sort of like the granddaddy of historical uh, nonfiction, I think, especially historical narrative nonfiction, is Eric Larson. Now, I've listened to two of his audiobooks, and I have to tell you, I don't think that his audio works very well. Um, I did recommend him to my grandfather, who listens to a lot of audio, and he he liked it better than I did. But I think, uh, specifically, Devil in the White City, I listened to that one, and I just think that the way it's broken up does not work that well in audio. So I want to give that caveat. But if you're looking for somebody who can write history as essentially as a story where it reads like a story, Eric Larson is where it's at. Devil in the White City is sort of his classic one. And then the other one that I would really recommend that I think is fascinating is In the Garden of Beasts, which documents the last um, US ambassador to Germany during like Hitler's rise and his family and how yeah, anyway, it's a fascinating story. And uh, if you're looking for historical nonfiction, that is, I think, the place to go for almost anyone. And then the third category of nonfiction that tends to work for dads is scientific nonfiction. And this can run a huge gamut. So I'm going to try to hit a variety of categories for a variety of different types of dads. So the first is like nutritional science, why we get fat and what to do about it by Gary Tobbs. A number of books by Gary Tobbs, I think would work really well. You guys, if you watch my channel, you know that I really love this author. I really love this book. I think it's fantastic. And yeah, it, you need to be careful because this could be insulting if you give somebody a book called Why We Get Fat. Um, so keep that in mind. But if there's a proper context there, like this is a, a great scientific nonfiction. Next, I thought I'd cover kind of like environmental science. So The Sixth Extinction by Elizabeth Colbert. I have not yet read this, but I have heard enough about this that I feel comfortable recommending it. And essentially, this is about how humans are impacting the sixth largest extinction event that our planet has ever seen. So environmental science, this would be a good choice. For like physics or space stuff, I mean, this is kind of an obvious one, but Neil deGrasse Tyson writes a lot of great books. He has a 
new one out, which is, I forget the title, I'll put it in here, put it in here. And I think that that would be a great gift, especially as sort of like a light, like, read or introduction to that topic. But he's a great choice if physics or something that that, that your recipient is interested in. Uh, then in terms of sort of like, I don't wanna say the softer sciences, cause I don't quite mean that, but just in terms of like sociology or psychiatry, that kind of area. Uh, when God Talks Back by Tana Lerman, Understanding the American Evangelical Relationship with God. This is a book essentially under, trying to understand from like a, what I would describe as a sympathetic secular view people who talk about hearing from God and whether or not that's like pathological or if there's something happening in their brains when they experience the voice of God, like what does that really mean, et cetera, et cetera. So this is, this is sort of like a more sociological or psychological type book. And then when we're talking about science nonfiction, I think you have to mention Mary Roach because she is a huge name in that area. She has a number of different topics she's covered, so I don't think you can kind of pigeonhole her in one place. Uh, she has one about sex called Boink. Kudos to you if you feel comfortable giving that to your dad. Uh, she has one called Stiff, I believe, which is about the science of death. She has one called Gulp, which is about like our digestive tract. She has a number of different ones and a lot of people really like her on audio. I will tell you, I don't really like Mary Roach. She doesn't quite connect with me in terms of her voice or style, but she has a lot of humor. And if you like her, you end up loving her basically from my experience. So um, I think that's definitely another author to look into because she has covered, like, I think she, she has one called Packing for Mars, so that's space travel. She has a lot of different topics she's covered, so she's she's a good one to check out. Okay, so now we're gonna move into fiction. And I have fewer recommendations, basically, for dads for fiction, because, like I said, I think that men don't tend to read as much fiction, or if they do, it tends to be in the group that we'll get to last, which is things that I think could work for everyone. In terms of things that I've observed, uh, tend to be more male buyers than female. Um, the number one area is sci-fi fantasy, right? So again, no judgment there, just saying that in my experience when I was a bookseller, that was that was what I observed. Um, so I thought I would go with sort of a classic idea and then maybe a more contemporary idea. Uh, I'm definitely not an expert in sci-fi fantasy, so I don't really feel comfortable trying to get like really detailed because a lot of the sci-fi fantasy I've read, I would actually classify as sort of like a hybrid. Um, and even actually one of these I would consider to be a hybrid, but um, I, I don't read a lot of like, um, high fantasy or hard sci-fi, so I can't give as many specific recommendations for those. But that being said, um, classic fantasy, if we're, if we're talking about the book that essentially created that genre, Lord of the Rings. Get this person a super nice edition of Lord of the Rings if they have read it. If they've not read it and they like fantasy, they should because this is like the Ur text. So, I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer, especially if they've seen the films. Like, that would be... That would be a good one. And then a more contemporary choice is The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. And I would consider this to be close to urban fantasy, probably urban fantasy, if I'm being honest. But I think that the, for me, this tips just enough into fantasy that I feel comfortable calling it that. So um, this is a really, really good book. And if you're giving a book to somebody who like kind of values the quality of the writing, this is a good choice. And then I would give for sci-fi, the kind of classic one is the Space Trilogy from C.S. Lewis. This is a really kind of like early entry in that genre as well and informative, definitely formative in some ways. So that is a, uh, <clears throat> a classic recommendation. And then something newer, I would say The Sparrow by Mary Doria Russell. This is a fantastic book. I do think you need a trigger warning on this because shit goes down uh and it definitely will make you cry <laughs> even your dad he may he may be cracking a tear over this one but it is a really it's speculative science fiction basically and uh involves space travel stuff like that so i think this is a good choice for sci-fi okay and last category that i have for dad is what i'm just going to kind of pejoratively term white guy literary fiction um, you can probably tell by the term that I use that I'm not a fan of this particular genre, but lots of dads are, especially if your dad is a reader and is of like more of a like literary bent. Um, this can be a good choice for him. So Jonathan Franzen is the contemporary person who certainly comes to mind for this. So um, I think Purity was one of his, The Corrections, 
all that stuff, that's an option. And then the classics of like mopey white guy fan, fi uh, fan fiction, mopey white guy fiction is uh, like uh, uh, Roth and uh, John Updike, I think are two great choices there. So Roth, uh, I think The Plot Against America is the one that I read. Yeah, that sounds right. And um, John Updike, the rabbit series, uh, Rabbit Angstrom, that is, that is classic Updike, so. That is all of my recommendations for dad, so let's move into mom. Thank you. 